Hey and welcome back to The Revolution and a brand new WWE 2K23 video. Thanks to 2K UK, last week I had the awesome opportunity to have a hands-on preview of WWE 2K23 with a preview build of the game, so let's discuss. To be sure you don't miss out on any of our upcoming WWE 2K23 content, hit that bell icon and subscribe to the channel. You can also head on over to our official website www.revolution.com for all the latest women's wrestling news and so much more. So where to begin? In our build for the game we had 20 superstars to choose from with 10 female superstars available to play as. The female superstars available were Asuka, Bailey, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler and Shotzi. Before we go into more detail about the women and their models and attires, we'll discuss more about the build itself first. With the preview build, we had around an hour to play with the 20 superstars as mentioned previously, with the match options including 1 on 1, 10 man Royal Rumble and the WWE 2K debut of War Games. It's also worth noting that the John Cena showcase was available to play, but due to us purely focusing on the women here on this channel, I thought it was best to purely capture as much women's content as possible. When it comes to the playstyle of WWE 2K23, it's very much similar to 2K22, with dodging and combos once again making their return, albeit with new animations, new reversal situations and stances, as well as a new HUD and general visual updates. Looking at the new HUD, the finisher and momentum bars have been switched round, with the finisher bar now consisting of three finisher bars like the special meter in last year, and the momentum bar now being the longer bar of the two. Whilst a subtle change, it does display the amount of finishes earned much clearer with the bars grayed out until the finisher is earned. When the momentum bar is filled, players then have the chance to use the signature, which then earns you a finisher once performed. The superstar damage display once again returns, with health ranging from grey to red to show how damaged a superstar is. Having only played a handful of matches during my time with the game, I didn't get a chance to dive in too deep with the gameplay itself, but for me personally, I felt as though the matches flowed a little bit better than last year, along with reversing being much easier this time around, with a few new reversal options for various moves that weren't previously included. When I'd initially heard of the update to the pin bar and system, I was somewhat sceptical, with many comparing the bar to the one in the last man's standing matches, which I personally am absolutely terrible at. Thankfully, the pin system is much easier than anticipated, with the right thumbstick executing a kick out within the pin minigame, which actually somewhat simulates the motion of a real life kick out. Last year, I was a huge fan of the button mashing kick out minigame, but after almost an entire year of button mashing, I will say my fingers are super happy about the change up. As someone who plays the game for hours on end, the button mashing, especially on harder difficulties, can become more tiring the longer you play. This time around in WWE 2K23, paybacks have been updated to allow superstars to choose two paybacks instead of one, with the option to switch between paybacks during a match by pressing down on the D-pad. I'm not 100% sure, but it seems as though possum pins and attacks, as well as rollouts, are available to everyone this time around, making matches a little more unpredictable. There are so many little nuances implemented this time around, for example weapon taunts, which although might seem like small little additions, they really do add another layer of not only gameplay but storytelling. Just like the weapon taunts, whilst the addition of female referees may seem like a small update for casual players, for us as women's wrestling fans or WWE 2K storytellers, this has been a much needed addition and adds another element for us to explore. The female referee comes with her own voice lines which I am so pleased about because for a split second I was definitely worried on that front. I for one hope that like the male referees that there are female referees for different eras with different shirts to represent different moments in time. It's no surprise that many of us creators like to tell stories with their content and having the ability to taunt with a weapon or having a female referee all add another dimension to telling our stories with the superstars in the game or our very own characters. Speaking of extreme things, I can't wait to see what everyone else thinks of War Games, and more importantly, I can't wait to kick everybody's ass on it. War Games is one of the huge selling points of WWE 2K23, and I can say I had an absolute blast playing match, and I can't wait to spend even more time with Mod when I'm not pressed for time. 
One of my favourite instances was seeing Becky rush to bring in several weapons to help aid in the match whilst I fended off against two opponents all on my own. The handicap element creates a sense of urgency as you attempt to get the upper hand with the tension building until both teams are level pegging. Whilst I didn't get the chance to use the table in the match, I did see fellow creator Smack Talks use the table and he even set it on fire so I can't wait to recreate some over the top extreme moments. There are several instances like these throughout the War Games match that really make the mode for me. Is it like a cage match? Sure, but the delayed participants and the weapons really add another level to the mode, especially if the other team has the advantage. Now, I'm not sure what difficulty we were playing on, but I assume it was either easy or normal, especially given how quick the match ended once the final participant entered the match. Whilst I really enjoyed playing against the eye, I honestly think that online and local multiplayer is where this match will shine. I truly think the real true test of war games will be when players experience the mod playing against friends or competing online because you can't compare AI matches to playing against friends. That's not to knock AI because I've had some truly amazing matches over the years but playing against people you know is just a totally different ball game. You have to get tactical, perform moves and taunts to truly, quite frankly, piss off your friends and try and get them to cost themselves the win. Now let's get onto the topic that I'm pretty sure most of you are here for, the female superstars. With time being somewhat limited, I didn't get to dive into too much into the likes of move sets and finishes, but if there was anything specific I noticed, I'll be sure to mention it. In this next portion of the video, I'm going to break down the entrances and attires, so if there's something you think I might have missed, pop a comment down below. To reiterate, the female superstars available to play as were Asuka, Bailey, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler and Shotzi. Starting with Asuka, in our build Asuka was sporting her Hell in a Cell 2022 attire from her triple threat match with Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair. Asuka unfortunately didn't have her Royal Rumble new look theme or Titan Trons, but considering Asuka had only just debuted her new look two days earlier, it would be ridiculous to expect that to be included when we played. It's somewhat possible her new theme and Titan Tron could be patched in when the game releases, but with it being such a huge change for Asuka, I'm not 100% sure. There could be a slim chance we get the 2023 version of Asuka as part of my faction, but who knows, I certainly wouldn't be opposed. I will say that I absolutely loved how Asuka's Titantron popped on screen, especially with the ray tracing and theme pulsing in the arena. Like 2K22, Asuka has her entrance animation from 2K18 which, although dated, still perfectly fits her character. Following Asuka, we have Damage Control's Bailey, who was sporting her Extreme Rules 2022 attire from her match against Bianca Belair. Bailey once again had her heel theme, Titantron's and entrance animation as seen in 2K22 and I'm really hoping we have a tag team entrance or at least Titan Trons for the Damage Control trio. I personally thought Bailey looked so much better this year compared to 2K22, with a hairstyle more in line to her current look with a red Damage Control attire to match. I also thought that when it comes to attires, that Bailey's attire especially had far more texture this time around, with creases and folds making it look more lifelike. Following on from Bailey, we have Becky Lynch, which seems to have the community split. Becky, like Asuka, can also be seen spotting her Hell in a Cell 2022 attire from the triple threat match along with Asuka and Bianca Belair. When it comes to the model, the way I've come to look at it is that the model itself is pretty damn awesome, but like last year with Liv Morgan, fans want a model that they can update with new attires that won't look odd due to the makeup. If Becky had this model as an alternate to a somewhat more general look, I don't think fans would have as many issues as the model and the attire itself is pretty damn good. Not only that, but the model is perfect for pay-per-view style matches, especially if you like to create your own short, as many of us do. It's not confirmed, but I also think that Becky may get updated to include her asymmetric visor, which would explain Becky's glazed expression during her entrance. I will say that I absolutely love Becky's entrance jacket and I have no doubt that many created superstars will be sporting it once the game releases. This year, Becky comes with a new entrance animation as well as a brand new Titan Tron and a brand new animation of the Manhandle Slam that comes with its own pin combo. Up next, we have Bianca Belair who comes with a recreation of her WrestleMania 38 Championship match with Becky Lynch. Whilst the attire itself may not be 100% accurate with different sunglasses and a missing bow, I will say that the attire itself is one of my favourite Bianca attires, so I'm glad to see the attire make the cut. I will say that I think Bianca's face model looks absolutely gorgeous and I personally think that she looks the best she has yet. 
it is a huge shame that it doesn't look like Bianca has her own championship entrance, especially after being the Raw Women's Champion for so long, but he's hoping we have at least one new championship entrance when the game drops. Unfortunately, I didn't come across anything new or major when it comes to Bianca, so I can't wait to dive back in to see if there are any updates to Bianca's moveset or if she comes with any little secrets. Following Bianca Belair, we have Charlotte Flair, who, as stated previously, is sporting an attire from the 2021 Thunderdome and post-pandemic era. Now, this might be a little controversial, but I actually really love how Charlotte looks. <laughs> it is a huge shame that we don't have a more up-to-date look, especially with some of the stunning looks Charlotte has had over the last few years, but as it goes, I still think that she looks pretty great here. Don't kill me. <laughs> now, it could be due to the fact that I'm a huge Charlotte Flair fan, but I really do appreciate the look and I can't wait to redesign and recolour the more edgy Charlotte jacket compared to her regal robes. Like Asuka, Charlotte doesn't come with her new theme, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the theme parted at the last minute, with Charlotte still using the same Titantrons in game. Up next, we have Liv Morgan, who thank God has more subtle makeup this time around, making it so much easier to create newer and up-to-date looks. As we can see, Liv Morgan is sporting her day one attire from her match against Becky Lynch from January 2022. Whilst the attire itself may not be as eccentric as some of Liv's other attires, it does look great here and I'm hoping it comes as separate pieces to mix and match with other gear in the game. Liv comes with updated Titan drones and her Watch Me theme, which goes so much better with her entrance animation if you ask me. Over the last week, I've had several messages asking if Liv has a new Oblivion animation for a finisher, but I personally didn't come across it. Now, that doesn't mean it's not in the game, as Livy uses a face breaker for a signature as seen in several of our recordings. Following on from Liv, we have Rhea Ripley, who was undeniably my favourite superstar from the entire build, with updated trons, theme and entrance animation. Rhea comes with a variation of her SummerSlam 2022 attire as part of her Judgment Day look, alongside fellow members Damian Priest and Finn Balor. From the attire to the lighting and just overall badassery entrance animation, everything looks good from head to toe with 2K perfectly capturing Rhea's essence. Like Bailey, Rhea's attire comes with so much more texture and detail compared to some of the other attires with the back of the jacket literally popping. Unfortunately, due to copyright, I couldn't include Rhea's theme in my coverage, but I couldn't get her entrance and her theme out of my head for days after playing. It's just too damn bloody good. If that wasn't cool enough, Rhea even comes with her own unique nameplate. Following on from Rhea, we have Ronda Rousey, who, like Bianca, is sporting her WrestleMania 38 attire from her match against Charlotte Flair. Before we touch on Ronda, if Ronda has her WrestleMania 38 attire, it's such a missed opportunity that we didn't see Charlotte Flair have hers, but anyway, moving back to Ronda. Though Ronda looks pretty sweet, there are no huge changes for Ronda between 2K22 and 23, where Ronda acted as DLC for the previous title. Like Liv, I appreciate that the makeup was toned down this time around with a more subdued and subtle look compared to the bold black eyeshadow and eyeliner as seen in 2K22. Speaking of Ronda, up next we have Ronda's tag team partner Shayna Baszler, who, like Ronda, is also spotting her WrestleMania 38 attire. Now, this is just pure speculation, but this could hint that Natalia could be also spotting her WrestleMania 38 attire, with Natalia acting as Shayna's tag team partner as part of the match. The match also featured Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Carmella, Zelina as Queen Zelina, and more interestingly, Naomi and Sasha Banks. Like I said, this is all just speculation, but just keep an eye for the superstars that haven't already been confirmed or those we haven't seen a tie for as of yet. As we move back to Shayna, Shayna comes with her updated limb by limb entrance theme. When looking side by side, I can't say that I can see any huge upgrades from 22 to 23 for Shayna, but Shayna's model looks good as it is and her attires don't change up that much, so it's not a real huge surprise. Last, and by certainly no means least, we have Shotzi, who seems to be sporting a variation of her Royal Rumble 2022 attire, where she entered the match at number 29. I have to say, I'm a huge fan of Shotzi's model and attire, with the jacket especially looking super cool. Shotzi comes with a new and updated Titantron, as well as updated sound effects for a 2K22 entrance, making the tank less harsh on the ears. Before seeing the entrance, I had expected Shotzi to get a new entrance without the tank after losing the tank last year for a period of time, so I'm pretty happy to see the tank once again featured for our epic entrance. For all there aren't any 
groundbreaking updates when it comes to the likes of new entrance animations. Overall, I would argue that there are far more positives than negatives, with each and every woman looking better to their previous incarnation, with Rhea Ripley especially being a huge standout. Rhea's model has me really excited to see the rest of the women's roster this year, especially those making their 2K debuts, so fingers crossed they look just as good, if not better than Rhea. I feel like I could go on for hours about the experiences I had with the brief time I played the game, and I've only touched on a fraction of the gameplay, so if you have any questions, be sure to pop them down below, and if I'm able to, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to 2K UK once again, because without them, I wouldn't have been able to put this video together. To be sure you don't miss out on any of our other WWE 2K23 videos, hit that bell icon and subscribe to the channel. You can also stay up to date with all the latest women's wrestling news by checking out our official website, www.revolution.com. Until next time, I've been The Revolution, and now I'm going to go sit and suffer until I can get my hands on the game next. <laughs>